There is nothing worse than spending a couple of weeks working on a set of bookshelves, or any type of shelving for that matter, only to see your shelves begin to sag under the weight of your library. We are going to look at the trade-offs for the various material and design options you have when building your bookshelves. Stick around to get a list of common shelf materials and how far they'll span, and point it to a shelf span calculator. It's a packed video. Your eye can spot a sag of as little as 132nd per foot. For a 36 inch bookshelf, you would easily be able to spot a one tenth of an inch sag in your newly installed shelving. To make matters worse, wooden shelves will sag over time by an additional 50% beyond the original load deflection. Libraries calculate the loading for books at around about 35 pounds per foot of shelf space. That's the reason you should only use those small packing boxes for books when you have to move house. Those suckers are really heavy. Just in case you thought your magazines were an easier option, magazines are even heavier than books and weigh in at around about 40 pounds per shelf foot. So how do you calculate the safe size of your shelves? You could go to the NDS, the National Design Specification for Wood Construction. The NDS gives you equations to calculate the maximum deflection for a given set of load conditions. These equations assume that you know the characteristics of the materials that you are dealing with. Fortunately, the table at the end of this video provides a much simpler option for most of us and covers the majority of choices we have to make. For all of you masochists, there is a link provided in the video description to the NDS publications on wood loading for those of you who need some bedtime reading. But there are some other design variables to be aware of. For most of our bookshelves, the shelf depth is pretty much going to be about 12 inches. For a given material, the length of the shelf is what we care about. The longer it is, the more sag it's going to experience. We can overcome shelf sagging by increasing the thickness of the shelf, increasing the number of supports, or decreasing the distance between the supports. Or possibly by changing our choice of material. Alternatively, we could change the construction techniques we use. Shelves can be glued to rabbits in the side or back panels of the bookcase. The shelves I built for the kitchen renovation used this style of support to account for the heavy storage loads. A stiffening strip of wood can be applied to the front or to the back edge of the shelf. Or we could double the thickness of the shelf by gluing two sheets of material together. However, the choice of construction techniques impact the aesthetics, style, and finish for your bookshelves. If you fix the shelves in rabbits, they can't be adjusted or reconfigured, making the bookshelves much less useful over time. In the video on built-in bookcase design, you will see that the middle shelf has been rabbited, mainly to strengthen the case by providing some rigidity. Using a stiffening strip can make a huge difference to some materials as we will see a little later. However, if you are looking for a clean design and to maximize the number of shelves in the bookcase, then that extra thick appearance won't be what you want. Here are some rough rules of thumb for span calculations. If you add 10% to the width of a shelf, you'll make the shelf 10% stronger. If you add 10% to the length of a shelf, you'll make the shelf 10% weaker. And if you add 10% to the thickness of the shelf, you'll make the shelf 21% stronger. Hardwood or softwood lumber is stronger than most sheet materials. MDF or medium density fiberboard is stronger than particle board, but not as strong as plywood. And if you're using plywood, in general, more plies are stronger. There are some other design trade-offs to consider. How much space do your shelves have to span? In a standalone bookcase, it may be easier to shorten up the shelves by making the case narrower. But if you are producing a built-in bookcase like the one I am building, the shelf length is determined by the room space that it has to fit into. Then we need to think about what type of aesthetics are important. 
Do you want a heavy looking shelf? Maybe for your gothic dark wood library? Then even utilizing a two inch shelf stiffener is probably just fine. I needed a light and airy shelf that fits the Victorian Queen Anne style of my house renovation in San Francisco. For a natural wood grain with an oiled or stained finish, you will generally want to opt for hardwood or at least a hardwood veneered plywood with edge binding. Of the types of edge binding shown here, the second one proved durable on my kitchen cabinet shelves. To suit the style of my house, I opted for a spray painted finish. So there was no point in paying for hardwood or even a veneered plywood. MDF is a desirable paint surface, but that did not meet the span requirements for my shelving. Then finally, there is the cost of materials and construction. Wood product prices have gone through the roof during the pandemic, and even plywood products have trebled in price. Hardwood is usually the most expensive option. Plywood and MDF are about the same price, depending on the grade that you choose. So in the end, I opted for an MDF veneer over cabinet grade plywood, sometimes known as XDF. XDF is cheaper than hardwood veneered plywood and was a better painted finish option. So how do we pull all of these design factors together to evaluate how far our shelves will span? For our evaluation, let's assume a loading of 35 pounds per foot for books on a 12 inch wide shelf using a 3 quarter inch material. So what can we expect for shelf spans for typical materials? Particle board is the worst option at a tiny 24 to 26 inch span, depending on the grade. MDF is 28 inches, fir plywood is 42 inches, pine or spruce is a 42 inch span, red oak is 42 inches, white oak is 44 inches, sugar or hard maple is 48 inches. And the overall winner is yellow birch coming in at a 50 inch span. Now what happens if we add a one inch wide, three quarter inch thick front stiffener? Based on the expected type of wood finish applied to particle board, MDF or plywood, we used a fur stiffener. For all other materials, the stiffener was the same material as the shelf. Particle board gets a huge boost to a maximum length of 30 inches. MDF extends to 32 inches. For plywood and most hardwoods and softwoods, they get an extra two to four inches of span. In my case, selecting MDF veneered plywood easily meets my span requirements of 30 inches with plenty of extra margin. I don't need a stiffener, so simple iron-on edge banding was sufficient to cover the plywood edges and also allows me to keep a lighter looking shelf. An MDF, when it is properly sealed, provides a great spray painting surface. Take a look at the built-in bookshelf videos to see how my choices worked out. If your requirements are different than the ones most of us work with and you need to know a specific set of results for your selected wood type, take a look at the sagulator. If this video has been useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for future content.